Hello there, skating fans. Thanks a lot for tuning in to this GSN News episode. We are very excited to share with you a recap from the previous World Cup in Beijing. Exciting results there. And also look ahead towards the World Cup starting in just a few days here in Stavanger, Norway. We also have some junior World Cup results that we're going to share with you. And as you may have seen in the title, Nils van der Poel is back in skating. And we also have a special guest today. Aaron Jackson, our <laughs> reality TV star oh, and Olympic gold medalist, is here with us today. She uh, was on our live show during the last races, uh, during the last World Cup, and now she's graced us with her presence in our GSN News Show. How's it going, Aaron? It's going great. Happy to be here, ready to talk to you guys. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I was paid to be here, so. <laughs> in latte. <laughs> in coffee. <laughs> so, Aaron. Give us a little recap of the World Cup so far from your perspective. You're leading the 500 meter World Cup standings right now. I am, yeah. Uh, currently leading the standings in the 500, which was, you know, kind of a surprise coming into it because you never know what you're going to get when, <laughs> I don't know, coming into the beginning of the season. Um, yeah, I would say overall a lot better than it was last year for me. And yeah, getting my feet under me. And then for the rest of the team, I feel like Team USA has been performing really well. You know, other than, you know, maybe a few sicknesses here and there. But yeah, it's nice to see everyone coming up. You know, you talked about how the difference between this year and last year. What do you think the difference was? Was it just a lot of media stuff that you did after the Olympics or just more of like a come down after that? super intense season what was like the difference yeah probably a bit of both I know that last year I was like barely at practice I think the first training <laughs> block I did was in like we had a training camp uh, yeah. in Milwaukee I think that was like the only full training block I did last season yep. uh, uh, like all the rest of the time I was kind of like in and out for you know different appearances and things like that so that definitely contributed to a, <laughs> a subpar season okay. and then just some like injury issues like lingering back things and stuff like that right. but that seems to be all resolved now so I'm feeling a lot better nice yeah we talked about it going into the first world cup how insane your schedule was of milwaukee trials go to pan ams inline that's an inline inline, race. Yeah. <laughs> inline pan american games different yeah. sport and then switch right back to the ice and you still got second in your first race if but i remember yeah. that correctly you had one basically an ice touch before that 500 meter the day yeah, before so i in. got in the morning of race prep so I like went to the hotel, <laughs> dropped my bags, hopped on the bus. <laughs> Ryan put my skates together while I was warming up, and then just got on, did my race prep, and then raced the next day. And still <laughs> and medal. Yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> also insane. then. Yeah. Uh, how how have you been able to do that? Do you just not think about it, and it's just uh, you're switching from inlines to ice? It's just skating, or is there like something that you're doing to prepare for inlines when you go there, or ice when you go there? Right. Um, yeah, I didn't really do anything to prepare for the inlines, you know, going into it. But luckily, I had a few days to kind of adjust a little bit. And I think switching back to ice is a little bit harder for me. Okay. But luckily, with this trip, it was only like a week on my inlines. So I feel like it didn't fully stick. So I feel like that's where <laughs> things went better for me. Because right. last year, I did almost the same thing where I went to inline worlds right before coming to the first World Cup. Yeah. But that was like a two-week trip on my inline. So then when I came back to ice, I was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I guess the, the inline is more natural for you. So yes. it's, you can switch back and Yeah. So if I'm on my it. inlines too long, it's like I forget how to ice skate. Okay. So this that time, you know, I forgot a couple things that I had to kind of like rehash. But for the most part, it was, yeah, not too bad. So we just talked about it. You're leading the 500-meter uh, World Cup standings here. You did great in Beijing. In the other distances, who, who else did we see there? What, what were the big surprises? What the do you Japanese guys think? are insane right now. <laughs> They're on a roll. Especially <laughs> World Cup 1. Impressive. And yeah. the Chinese also now. Yeah. It just seems like oh, yeah, yeah. Asian skaters do really good at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see if we get another bump up from the Norwegians. It, you know, mm -hmm. this year, more than most, seems like there's been a bigger influx. It's only two World Cups so far. But a bigger uh, improvement from the home ice advantage. Mm -hmm. Han May, who had never podium before, podium twice, both the 1500 and the 3000. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, really, yeah, really good weekend. Uh, really, all of Team Gold. We should probably they just nailed that race. Yeah, cover that. I, what was it? They had one skater not meddling out of six. <laughs> yeah, I, and and he, he also skated well. So, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty a, impressive. Really good weekend for them. There was also a lot of skaters that did not have a good weekend. The amount like we're here in Norway, all the skaters are here at the same hotel. I think every single person I asked, "Yo, how's it going?" I was like, "Ah, still recovering from all the sickness." Mm -hmm. Was there a lot of people ill in yes. Beijing. It yeah. seemed like everyone was sick in Beijing and I was just like trying to keep my distance. <laughs> keep them at, bay. at this point I've come out unscathed but you know there's still time. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, that that probably makes a big difference in the long run of the season, mm. getting sick or not. I mean, Yamada went from king of the world, yeah. winning the thousand and the fifteen hundred, his first medals ever, uh, and then he might have dropped out of a group because of yeah. his races in uh, Beijing. So hopefully he turns it around back yeah. here. Uh, but yeah, that that sickness was a killer. Yeah, it took a lot of people out. So. Speaking of that, uh, he's not the only person we might see in the B group. I do think this is one of the World Cups, through the time that I can remember, where we see the most really good skaters skating in the B group. We have Irene Trouden, triple Olympic champion, mm -hmm. uh, is now racing the B group because she only finished, I think it was eighth in a mass start. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, same goes for the other Dutch skater. We just have a lot of... And the 3,000 for her, so this oh, week yeah. in the 5,000, she should be yeah. uh, also in B group. Uh, Jordan Stoles will be in B yeah. in the 500 and the 1,000. 1,500, he'll stay. That is crazy. Uh, yeah, so you've got all these people that are world champions from last season mm. or yeah. Olympic champions that are going to be even in B. Yeah. So even this is going to be an insane B division. I assume you need to stream it or let us do it. <laughs> yeah, again. please. <laughs> yeah, even like Ting Yu Gao, reigning Olympic champion in 500 meter, unless he, I think, podiums here, he will also go back into the right. B group. So kind of sad that... A lot of people, unless you're here on site, you won't get to see those people. More big news from the weekend. Uh, Uta Leardom had her first defeat in 18, 19 races. She won 18 straight 1,000 meters, some of which were time trials. But regardless, in Holland, to do time trials and their, tr their World Cup trials and at World Cups, 18 straight races is a hell of a long streak. So impressive, yeah. very impressive run there. Um, but it came to an end with Miho winning back in Beijing again. Um, and then Kimmy was second place. And I think that's something else to be talked about. There was a lot of you that you won gold in Beijing. You won both 500s in Beijing again, undefeated on that track, even the time trial before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, so what do you think was the reason? Do you think people are comfortable there? Does it bring back feelings of being at the games again? Or like, why was yeah, there was so a lot many of people, like, performance? The same I mean, for Kale Noise. Yeah. He also, yeah. I think it's a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think going back, you know, just like stepping into that venue again, it just like, I don't know, it does something. It brings yeah. like, you know, all these amazing feelings. So I don't know. I think it's just the the vibe in the in the venue after you like accomplish something so big it's like you can't help but show up again yeah. so no it makes sense yeah but it was across the board you yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> Lorenzen and Laurent like they, a bunch of people stepped back up mm -hmm. um some that were not really that close to the podium weekend one were right. shot back up so no, that's true no uh, it wasn't just the seniors that skated fast uh over the last week there was a junior and a neo senior world cup held in Paselga, Italy where we uh we saw some interesting times there. We saw uh, a Japanese girl skating a 39.6 in the 500, winning that event, and also ranking second in the 3K. So it seems like we have another oh. Miho coming up here. Nice. Yeah. The we, Japanese are uh, pretty solid juniors. Yeah. Always always are, but that one's a good one to be good at the full spectrum. I have a question for you two. Um, so there's the Junior World Cup. For those that don't know, that's if you're under uh, senior level, basically. You can be a Junior B, uh, so the four years leading up to becoming a senior and then there's the neo senior which is the first three years of your senior career or yeah. four yeah. four years of your senior career mm -hmm. where you can either race senior world cups or you can skate these neo senior world cups and i am curious to what you guys think i do think personally that it has been a little like four continents that the best skaters obviously won't go because they'll go to the senior world cups mm -hmm. and if we look at the results here from the last race here a few days ago the across the six distances Four of those had faster junior winning times than the new senior. So do you think it's worth having that competition if the best are not there because they're what do you think, actually good enough for the Let's senior? Let's see. Um, so yeah, I'm out of the loop on a lot of things, so I didn't even know this was a thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe just have junior and senior, you know, and then yeah, yeah just kind of let them. But I mean, I guess it could be beneficial if, you know, they feel like there's no place for them, you know, coming in from junior to senior but from what i've seen i mean it feels like the juniors are holding their own for the most part right. yeah i i think it's still an important competition to have and it seems like they're getting a lot of participation in those races uh from the neo senior mm -hmm. standpoint um and i think it's important for people to have more racing opportunities especially if they come from inlines first and don't have certain other racing chances um 
And I've seen so many skaters over the years not get good until yeah. 24, 25 years old. So keep you in the game for a little longer. Right. And, and, and I think it's also really important for countries that have uh, a lot of depth. So the yeah. Japanese, uh, the, the Dutch for sure, they need those racing chances when they're not going to get it at the senior level yet. They need to continue to develop. Um, some obviously are good right out of juniors, but it does take – those countries a little bit longer yeah i think also so. for the three of us we've been or we are representing denmark or representing the u.s or currently uh is not the countries like despite good results not yeah like you said it's the not that not much depth much. Yep. that we didn't have to go through years of senior skating where we could only race nationally um so yeah it could yeah, be different for the we, dutch or the japanese we have the opportunity to kind of like limp onto the team mm-hmm. at first i know my first couple teams i you know in d- these standards shouldn't have been at but it was good experience and um you know i think these junior world cups and neo senior world cups give people a better chance yeah that's a good so. point so how big is the neo senior championship or world cup i'm not sure how many skaters there were um but it seemed like 15 Probably. to 25 roughly yeah. that range per, race. per, per oh, race. Then, yeah that's good so yeah i thought you guys were saying it was just like this smaller competition where you know it's just like a few people but yeah. i mean it seems like no it's good yeah. and it's looped in with the juniors yeah. so they mm-hmm. they have a lot of races together nice um yeah it's good i think it's good yeah staying with the juniors we had uh some portuguese skaters racing in heron Fien, actually Ooh. 15 of them which is really impressive given yeah. that they have no ice ranks within a thousand miles <laughs> um and the most exciting of of that um is that there was a junior b girl skating a 41 zero Okay. That yeah. is, whether you're from those Portugal are, or not, that's fast. Those yeah. are some scary fast times. Yeah. And there was two of those girls. Yeah. Same age, uh, both skated 41-something. And <laughs> is this part of the inline design. takeover? I think so. Yeah, okay. But, it uh, seems very organized to just have 15 people over there. I didn't know a... that they had actually been on ice for an extended period of time, but apparently they have. These Portuguese <laughs> times were skated in Herenfein, a very famous rink called Tielf. And this rink, despite being in the Netherlands where they don't really have any mountains or any other winter sports, they might actually host the Olympics in 2030. Switzerland and Sweden are the two remaining countries that are bidding to have these Olympic Games in 2030. And Switzerland just gave in their bid, putting Herrenfein, Tielf, in the middle of the Netherlands, or even at the other end of the Netherlands, as their ice skating rink. How do you guys like that? I think that's like a six to eight hour car drive from yeah, Switzerland. I think it's cool. The potential of Tialf having the Olympics, of course, it's essentially the mecca of speed it. skating, and it would go nuts. It would be huge. However, <laughs> six to eight hours from everything else just doesn't give it the same Olympic feel. Like, no. You know, a lot of the Olympics is about meeting other people from other countries, mm-hmm. mixing in with different sports that we don't normally get to see. Yeah, um, we're losing that. You know, kind of more than just a, a speed skating competition. And if you put it in Tialf, it is another yeah. speed skating comp. So. I mean, it's been done before, right? Like at the last games, wasn't the mountain village like six hours away? I think it was, yeah, it was. It was kind of far. I wonder if it couldn't go because of COVID anyways, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this time it's two entire, entirely different countries. Yeah, that's They're, strange. They don't even border. Yeah, border yeah. Each other. yeah it's a. Uh, I still vote Salt Lake 2030. So that would be nice. <laughs> I would oh, love yes. to see it. If, the, if it is Switzerland, I would love to just see it on the lake. St. Moritz. Oh, oh, beautiful. I think that'd be so cool to have it outdoors again. They won't, but. <laughs> it's worth a shot. So we have some super exciting news out of Sweden. Vic's favorite skater, potentially, uh, Nils Vanderpol, is making a comeback of sorts. He skated a 5,000 meter. Vic, tell us about it. Well, Nils Vanderpol is back. The time itself in that 5K was not that impressive. He skated a 714, but it is to be said that that was on a 250 meter ice rink in Trollhättan, Sweden. Not the fastest. Just to give you a reference here, he skated when he did his last comeback, and he's good at those. He skated a 719, same date, on the same track, and this time it was a 714. So, so you're saying. So that is impressive. That is very impressive. So we're looking at a potential 557 5K coming right up. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. No, oh, um, yeah, we don't really know how much of a comeback it actually is. That race was organized by his own dad, so it could also just be like a nice move to, like, you know create some hype around it but he did skate it and and it wasn't slow looking at the time he probably gave a lot of effort there what do you think Aaron we're we gonna see Nils Vanderpol on the on the ice at an international race game um I mean I hope so I feel like just having him there kind of like elevates the game a little bit so I'm definitely looking forward to a comeback 
let us know in the comments if you think we will see Nils Vanderpool at a World Cup or even World Champs. He can do those comebacks in, in very little time. He's proven before. Yeah. yeah. Come back, make people cry, disappear. Yeah, yeah I wonder, I wonder <laughs> if he's been night. staying just as fit. <laughs> Uh, doing his ultra marathons or yeah. what he's been up to. You never know what he never know what he's doing up there. Mm. You know. Uh, kind of just thought of a question for Aaron. Do you have any skaters from other distances that you either admire or just are interested in? Let's see. I mean, put you on the spot. Put me on the spot. I mean, we were just talking about this like a few days ago about how like when I first came into the sport because I didn't watch this sport before I did it. Um, but when I came in and I was watching the World Cups and things like that, like, I thought Brittany was just incredible, right? Like, being able to do, like, you know, all these different distances and medal in all of them. Yeah. And then I was telling her, like, man, this is crazy. And then she actually gave props to Miho at being, like, more impressive, you know, because then with Miho, you kind of add, like, uh, the longer distances right. in there. So, I don't know. I just, I love watching Miho skate as well. And just, just I don't know, super impressive to see. Uh, especially her technique and just, you know, how can sh how she can just dominate in a bunch of different distances. Right. Including the 500. <laughs> <laughs> but you got her. <laughs> By a little bit. Yeah. No, I, I think Miho's a great answer. We've yeah. talked about her a ton. Um, she just can yeah, she seemingly won. win a medal and everything, and it obviously has to be from being that good of a skater. Yep. Jordan is, like, creeping on that same territory. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's going to be meddling in any 5Ks or 10Ks anytime soon, which she can do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe there's a men's 3K. That would be then, fun. Uh, yeah. you'd see Jordan step up. I feel up like and, yeah. Jordan has the potential. I feel like he's still figuring some things out. Like he's, like especially in that 15, just I feel like he has a lot more to give in that distance. And then, yeah, just once he figures some things out, I think he'll be a threat in everything. Yeah. Okay. So for our trivia question from last week, we asked, what are the fastest 100 meter times skated by a man and a woman, and who are they? Aaron, do you know who the fastest woman opener was? Sangwa. Ah, do you know what the time was? 10.09. Yeah. She did her homework, folks. Because uh, Brittany just sent me this video like a week or so ago, so yep. I watched it and I was like, that's fast. It's fast. <laughs> do you know what your fastest opener is? I do not. Okay. I think it's, it's probably a... like an eight something. <laughs> <laughs> It's fast. There's okay. just nobody to film it. It's probably like a 10.1. It might be. <laughs> we'll have to look. So the second fastest ever. Uh, no, it's like a 10.3 mid. 10.3 mid. Maybe 10.3.2. Yeah, maybe. Somewhere. That sounds right. 10.3.2. We'll go with that. Almost yeah. as fast as Aaron's 8 point whatever. Speaking of. <laughs> the fastest man ever. What was that? Who was that? And what was that? Uh, that was Gao. In Ting you Gao. Poland, I think. Yes. A couple years ago with a 9.3. Two. Hey. So probably eight point something in Salt Lake. Yeah, exactly. Yes, Aaron is correct on our trivia questions today. Yep. Our trivia question for next week is? It's a tough one. This World Cup we just had in Beijing, Kiel Nois won the 1,000 meter by in a very impressive margin. Oh, he won a point eight eight seconds. The question is, when was the last time that a, a person or a man won the 1,000 meter men's? by a larger margin than that? And who was that in a World Cup? That's a good question. Vic. Do you, do you know question. that, Aaron? I mean, I can't answer it now, can I? Because uh, you, you, I think, yes. Do you know the answer? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Do you have a guess? I mean, has it happened in my lifetime? My skating lifetime? Nope. Oh, then no, yes. I don't know. <laughs> Not in your skating lifetime, no. Okay, then no. I don't know. Oh, we're giving away too many hints. If you know this, even after some Googling, let us know in the comment section below, and you will win free tickets to a World Cup of your choice. To the event, not the plane tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nor the accommodation. Fine print, fine print. <laughs> see, if, see if Kimmy can get you back in the 500. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Looking ahead, <laughs> this weekend we have another World Cup coming up here in Stavanger, Norway. Aaron Jackson. Is Aaron Jackson unbeatable? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's not the Spoiler answer. alert, she's not. Not unbeatable. Okay. Everyone's got a chance, you know. No matter how small that chance might be. <laughs> <laughs> That's the confidence we've been looking for. <laughs> Any other races you're looking forward to seeing this weekend? Um, or anything we should look out for? I'm looking forward to all these B group races that you mentioned. And also, I would love for the world to be able to see those. So, like, let's get that happening. I like it. Um, I am in one of those B group races, so I'm not excited about all these A-level people being in it as well. But, you know... <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the way the cookie crumbles. So <laughs> I hear you. Um, yeah, looking forward to seeing if you know the people who have been on top consistently can kind of stay there, or if we got some new people coming up. So. Cool. I if like Japan that. can still stay on top even this far from Japan. Yeah, I mean, they're always super impressive, and I want to see my guy Shinhama have some second outers this weekend. Whoever makes the pairings, like, please give him second outer because I love to see him uh, kind of rip up on people, and it's yeah. a little harder when he has second inner. So. It is sad to watch. I, yeah. He's so good, and he's going so fast in that second corner, yeah. and then it's just, like, a pivot for the whole corner. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. And I'm just over Big there fella. praying. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Shrek. Get through that corner. <laughs> Victor? Oh, kind of the same. I really hope Shinhama gets, like, a, you know, a clean race. Yep. Sucks they didn't build ice rinks for his size. But, um, yeah, I think it's just a matter of time. I think it's exciting that we have the 5K for the women, the 10K for the men, uh, for the first and last time this season to see, uh, yeah, who's going to do good there. They're always interesting. It's so up and down because it's such a long race and people can't really practice this in races because there are no races. Um, so I think that's going to be exciting. Yep. And, uh, yeah, to see – how things switched around since the Asian World Cups. Yeah. I think I'm excited to see the Norwegians at their home track, see how they do here. Uh, Ragnar's already been on fire, but maybe she's going to throw down a track record uh, here as well. Very possible. Um, I think <laughs> I'm excited to see a lot of the women's races, you know, see if uh, EJ and Kimmy can go 1-2 again. Love to see in it. In whichever order. Love uh, to see it. As many times as we can get that done. Yeah. Uh, see if Brittany can get back in the podium there in the 1,000 or 15, too. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of exciting stuff this weekend. Brit's an A group now on the 500, too. So Ooh. maybe she can pop off. She was about to smoke me in uh, at our trials. And then she had a little <laughs> misstep, but she was coming. She? she was coming in hot. Okay. She I've... was, like, in front of me at one point, and I was like, oh, shit. Can I say that? She's like, oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> so another cool thing to look forward to in this weekend's races. We're also going to do more TSN content. We're looking to create a new show called The Coach's Club. Yeah, work in progress with the title. But we're going to basically just bring in all the legendary coaches and have a little panel of them, ask them interesting questions that we would want to know. If you have any ideas for those questions, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, that's the thing we're looking forward to. We're also going to make some more either live content or just content from the rink, having like a little lounge section where skaters can drop by. Maybe yeah. you want to come by? If there's uh, vanilla lattes involved. We'll have lattes, uh, whatever she needs. <laughs> Victor doesn't yes. like vanilla lattes, <laughs> even though he's a vanilla latte himself. <laughs> there's enough in here already. <laughs> Is that because you're white and creamy? <laughs> Anyway. You're not invited, Aaron. <laughs> so the remaining World Cup field is invited to join us in the lounge <laughs> as long as they have a respectable coffee preference. <laughs> Whatever. No Starbucks orders allowed on... <laughs> no Frappuccinos. <laughs> on Dick <big> Show. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this episode of GSN. Uh, I was here with these two lovely gentlemen. And... Now we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Aaron, for joining us today. Uh, obviously, you know, we appreciate your time coming on the show. Yeah, this is my nap time, so I, you know, I sacrificed a lot to be here today. <laughs> for no latte. Yeah, for no latte. I did have a chococino, though. <laughs> Which Vic also doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> You're messing with the coffee's flavors. <laughs> He's the why vanilla ever, latte. I'm the chocolate. want a kid to be caffeinated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With our predictions for World Cup 3, we're going to start it off with the women's 500s. I'm going Aaron Jackson. And I'm going to take the big Kim. Kimmy Goods. Yep. Not little Kim. Men's son Kim. Next. The 1,000 meter or 500 meter men. <laughs> Even bigger. Shinhama. <laughs> the I, I big didn't... Tatsuya. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The big Shinhama. I think... Yep. He, yeah, he still hasn't had a perfect race, and when that's happening, he will be close to unbeatable. Okay, and I'm picking uh, Wataru Morishige for uh, four for four. Four in a row, I should say. Yeah. Very consistent. Uh, moving on to the women's thousand. I'm going with Big Kim on that one. Kimmy gets. <laughs> I'm going to stick with Miho. She is going into that as the favorite, and uh, even though we're back in Europe, I think she can pull it off. It's going to be a good little battle with those three, as it has been in the last two. Uh, men's thousand? 
for the men's thousand, again, I'm gonna go with the favorite, Kale Noise. He he won it by so much the last time that even if he has a bad one, I think he's still the. Yeah, I think definitely he's still worth the... mentioning that Jordan Stoles is gonna be in B group, so yes. can't pick Jordan. Uh, I'm going with Havard Lorenzen, although he's a little sick today. Uh, I'm hoping the home ice advantage helps him out. And he is. For the women's 15, I gotta go with Miho. She's been winning by a speed skating mile, um, so I assume that's gonna continue. For that one, I am gonna have faith in Norwegians, uh, specifically mm-hmm. Rakne. I think, I mean, she's been so strong in the in the 3K, and you know, the further we get in the season, generally people get a little faster. So I think she'll be good in the 15 as well. That's a good pick. Uh, Jordan is back in A group in the men's 1500, so Vic is going Jordan yeah. in the 15. Let's go, Jordan. Okay, and I will go K gelled in the men's 15. Okay. Women's 5,000 meters. I get to pick first this time, so I'm going with Ragne, home ice, and she's been on fire in the three case. Am I pick, picking Senna? No, we make, we put that backwards. <laughs> Again? So, <laughs> so everything Mitch just said, except I pick Ragne. <laughs> But he gets to pick first, so he goes right there. And I will go Sana Intoff uh, to win the women's 5K. <laughs> okay, now you go. That's For yeah. the men's 10K, I am going to go with the current world champion in that discipline, G Auto. Okay, solid. And I'm going to go with Patrick Roast. He's won the last two 5Ks. I think he can still do it in the 10K. Damn, I hope those two are going to be paired in the last pair together. That would be cool to watch. Uh, for the women's mass start, I'm going with the winner from last weekend, Marika Hunewald. And I will, uh, I'll be picking uh, Ebony Blondin. She's been on the podium in both of the, of the two World Cups. And she had. won the first one. Yeah. It's a good pick. Who you got in the men's? Bart Swings. Uh, he is pretty consistent. And, uh, yeah, I think... He still wants that first victory of the season. He hasn't had it yet, and uh, he did really good in that marathon in the Netherlands just two days ago. And I'm going with the wild card here. I'm going with the very sneaky Jordan Belchos to win season. this one. I'm very sneaky. Uh, team for sprints? the team sprint women, I got to go with the USA. As long as Big Kim's toe was okay, I think we got a win coming up. I'm going to say the Dutch. They did good last time, and uh, I have the impression they don't practice this so often together. So I think just the fact that they already did one, they're going to, you know, improve. That's enough practice. Yeah. Probably true. Once a year. Who you got for the men? Canada. When they do these well, and I also got some intri- inside uh, information yeah, yeah, yeah. from Aaron Jackson that Aaron Jackson gave me a they put together a <laughs> super-duper team. So Canada. Okay. Good pick. But I'm going to go with the... U.S. men as well. Uh, they won last weekend, and I think they can do it again. Let us know what you think. We're going to copy-paste the different disciplines down here in the, in the description, so you just copy-paste that into the comment section, and then uh, leave your guesses there. We're excited to see if you can beat us. Good luck. Mostly me, but... 